We will talk today about G proteins and second messages, specifically cyclic AMP, inositol triphosphate, and diacylglycerol. Now, G protein signaling is only found in eukaryotic organisms. It's a fun fact. Now, this is a G protein. It doesn't actually physically look like this. It is a trimeric. Now, it's trimeric because it consists of three subunits, alpha, beta, and gamma. The alpha subunit plays a key role in activating the effective protein in the cell membrane. Now when the G protein is not doing anything or is inactive, GDP is bound to the alpha portion of the G protein. GDP stands for guanosine diphosphate, diphosphate as in two phosphates. However, when it is activated through the G protein coupled receptors, GDP is exchanged for another molecule, GTP. So where does G protein sit? It is attached in the inside of the cell membrane. This is a simple diagram of the G protein signaling process. This is a G protein coupled receptor. It receives the signal. And this is the effective protein. It then activates other components in this signaling cascade, usually a protein, enzyme, or it synthesizes secondary messengers itself. Now, the process begins when a ligand binds the G protein coupled receptor. Now, this causes a conformational change that will activate the G protein inside the cell. When the G protein is activated, it converts GDP to GTP. Now, GTP is abundant in the cytosol. GTP stands for guanosine triphosphate. It's tri because it contains three phosphates. Now when GTP is bound, the alpha subunit disassociates with the beta gamma complex. The alpha subunit then moves and activates or, or inhibits the effector protein. The effector protein then activates or inhibits the signaling cascade. It is called second messenger because the bound ligand on the G protein coupled receptor was the first. Now when the alpha and effector protein finish what they're doing, the alpha subunit hydrolyzes GTP back into GDP. Alpha subunit then dis disassociates with the effector protein. The alpha subunit reattaches back with the beta gamma complex, completing the G protein signaling process. Now here's another diagram of the cell membrane. Here is the receptor and the effector protein or target protein. You might have heard names such as uh, metabotropic and muscarinic receptors used interchangeably for G proteins, but do not get mixed up with this. Um, metabotropic receptors are typically G protein coupled receptors used for neurotransmitters. Muscarinic are specifically acetylcholine G protein receptors. Now, another point to make is that the alpha portion of the G protein complex can also be excitatory, meaning promoting something, or inhibitory. Now, excitatory, as an example, can be adrenaline in the fight and flight response. Um, and an inhibitory example can be somatostatin, inhibiting secretion of growth hormone. So remember, the alpha subunit can be excitatory or inhibitory. So now let's look at an actual example of a G protein second messenger signaling system. For our next model, we will use an adrenergic receptor as an example. Adrenergic receptors, as you may know, function through G protein signaling. Adrenergic receptors are essentially for adrenaline or noradrenaline. As an example, adrenaline binds the receptor, initiates a conformational change, and activates. G protein. GDP is exchanged for GTP and the alpha portion of the G protein complex disassociates. The alpha portion binds to the effector protein called adenylate cyclase. Adenylate cyclase converts ATP into cyclic AMP and releases phosphorus in the process.
So this is two phosphorus in the process. Now, ATP, as you know, is a is adenosine triphosphate and is the energy currency in the body. Cyclic AMP stands for cyclic adenosine monophosphate. Cyclic AMP is the second messenger. Cyclic AMP causes increased heart rate, constricted blood vessels, because these are the effects of the hormone adrenaline. Now, cyclic AMP converts to AMD and ADP, then finally back to ATP. Now, there are other effective proteins which activate or synthesize second messengers. Adenylate cyclase, which we discussed, synthesizes cyclic AMP from ATP. Now another effective protein is cyclic GMP phosphodiesterase. Now both adenylcyclase and cyclic GMP phosphodiesterase can be categorized under cyclic neo neo nucleotides because of its structure or similar structure. Now there's also potassium and calcium channels phospholipase C and A2, and many more other complex ones. Now we'll focus on phospholipase C as an example of the G-protein signaling process and describe the roles of its secondary messengers. Now here's a G-protein coupled receptor. Here's a trimeric G-protein. And this is phospho phospholipase C. Close to it are two proteins attached together, one bound to the cell membrane and the other just hangs off. Both of these are referred to as PIP2. PIP2 stands for phosphatidyl inositol 4,5 biphosphate. That's a pretty complex name. Now let's see how PLC second messenger system works. A lingon, usually thyroid stimulating hormone, vasopressin or angiotensin, binds to the G protein coupled receptor inducing a conformational change, activating the G protein. Now GDP gets G GDP gets changed to GTP, alpha subunit disassociates with the beta gamma complex, the alpha subunit attaches to the phospholipase C, which then hydrolyzes PIP2. The hydrolysis of PIP2 yields two products, DAG and IP3. Now, DIG stays attached in the inner layer of the cell membrane due to its hydrophobic properties. DAG and IP3 act as separate messengers. DAG stands for diacylglycerol, and this second messenger recruits protein kinase C, or PKC. Now, PKC is an enzyme which plays an important role in cellular signaling. However, PKC recruitment and activation cannot happen without calcium ions. Now luckily, um, IP3, the other messenger, helps with this problem. Now IP3 stands for inositol triphosphate. It travels in a cytosol and binds the endoplasmic reticulum receptors. Now binding of IP3 to receptors on the endoplasmic reticulum increases the release of calcium ion ions in the cytosol thus enabling specific function of DAG, the recruitment of PKC. And this makes DAG and IP3 have, they have a good relationship. Now, it is also interesting to note that calcium ion is also a second messenger. A rising concentration of calcium ions in a cytosol triggers many types of events, such as muscle contraction and even apoptosis. Now, this presentation was on G proteins. Um, please comment and provide feedback. Thank you.